You are watching the ACC on ESPN. Carter Finley Stadium, the spot today for the regular season finale for NC State. And East Carolina makes the 90 mile drive from Greenville to Raleigh today. ECU and NC State. Kickoff is coming up shortly. And with Stan Luter, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. Glad you could join us today. The rivalry, the NC State ECU rivalry, it's renewed. Both of these teams, they lost games in September due to the hurricanes that passed through the Carolinas, so they battle on the gridiron today for the first time in a couple of years. And I certainly extend my thoughts and prayers to all the hurricane victims, and we hope for speedy recoveries. But this rivalry is gone for a long time. It feels a little different the first time in December. But remember this, it's NC State, it's East Carolina, and they still don't like each other. Now these two teams are moving in different directions. The Wolfpack can go for its second straight nine-win season. ECU, 3-8 and eight this year, dismissed its head coach, Scotty Montgomery, on Thursday. It's been a very difficult three years for East Carolina and Scotty Montgomery. This is a program that's accustomed to winning. Things just did not work out, and so they made the decision. You've got to move on. This is the birth of a new program for ECU today. Well, one player you could rely on for ECU, Nate Harvey. The conference's defensive player of the year. He's been sensational this year for the Pirates. Man, I love me some Nate Harvey. It's a great success story when you talk about Nate Harvey. He was a walk-on, attended Georgia military for a few years. He's a local kid. He leads the conference in tackles. He's one of the best guys around. Number one in the NCAA in tackles for loss. Number two in sacks with 13. Gets off the football very aggressively. He's a hard guy to block. Look for some double teams today out of NC State on him. But he can make game-changing plays. Then the other side of this is Trevon Brown, big time wide receiver, averages almost 100 yards per game. He can make the deep play and he can also go over the top. And what I like about him is that he's been very durable throughout his four year career at East Carolina University. Trevon Brown's an outstanding player. I think you're gonna enjoy watching him today. Next level receiver, another durable player. Let's go to the Wolfpack side. Reggie Gillespie, five touchdowns last week. Yeah, Reggie Gillespie. I don't know if he's an inside guy or if he's an outside guy. He can go inside and pound and he can do it really well. Five touchdowns yesterday. Two touchdowns away from setting the school record as far as touchdowns go. But he's got the speed. He can make the plays. He wants two more football games to pass 1,000 yards. And the other side of that, Jermaine Pratt, all ACC performer, led the ACC in tackles. He had five football games this year where he had 10 tackles or more. Always around the football, gets his hands on some deflections, chase you down. Remember these guys, these are some outstanding players we're going to watch today. ECU, it has beaten the Wolfpack three straight times in this series over the last eight years. NC State trying to go for its ninth win. Kickoff coming up next. Yes, sir. Kickoff between NC State and East Carolina is just a few moments away. These two teams have been battling on the gridiron since 1970. Dave Doran, as the head coach of the Wolfpack, now he has not beaten ECU. But he has a chance to win his ninth game this season. It would be back-to-back -back nine win years for Dave Doran and North Carolina State. 63 degrees. At kickoff, a little breeze, but not bad weather for December football in Raleigh. Stan mentioned it, Scotty Montgomery relieved as the head coach at ECU on Thursday morning. David Blackwell, the first-year defensive coordinator who has vastly improved this defense from a year ago to this season, is now the interim head coach, at least for today. David Blackwell is a graduate of East Carolina University. He understands the pur purple pride and the passion but at Jacksonville State for a long time, it had one of the best defenses in the FCS. Has come here and wants to do the same thing for this afternoon. NC State and ECU for the 30th time. We're underway. Ryan Finley in the Wolfpack offense out there to begin. Ryan Finley has a chance, Stan, to eclipse 10,000 yards in his career.
Finley, the sixth year senior from Phoenix, ready to go with Rachel Lashby behind him. The pass on first down, incomplete. Finley was looking for Jacoby Myers. So second attack. Jacoby Myers, Kelvin Farman, two of the outstanding receivers. Both of these guys are all ACC receivers. They can switch the defense deep. They can go over the middle. The slant routes are going to be very successful. Three wide receivers right there in this set for NC State. Rare to have, as you said, a pair of first-teamers. Kelvin Harmon, next-level receiver, makes the catch. Picks up about seven, so third and short coming up. Sergeant on the tackle there. Came in with 31 tackles, eight defensive pass breakups. Look for them to test him a lot. The defensive secondary East Carolina has been picked on from time to time throughout the year. Finley will find those holes and make them pay. Finley, quick strike. And over the middle to Myers. Carrying defenders with him. And NC State sets up at the 42. NC State was best in the ACC on third down conversions. Had a third and short, little skinny post route there. Finley plenty of time, and then again, those wonderful wide receivers, Myers and Harmon. Myers came in with 76 receptions for 865 yards and a couple of touchdowns, and you can see his explosive over the top. Nearing 1,000 yards, Ryan Finley. He may have a pair of 1,000-yard receivers this season. Stan, you mentioned Corey Sargent a few moments ago. He is the player right now being checked on by the athletic training staff. One thing I noticed on this first drive, these first few plays, Finley has a lot of time to throw the football. And one of the things that we had talked about going into this game is that East Carolina had to be able to put pressure on the quarterback to try to control the line of scrimmage some way. So far, Finley, the nice offensive rhythm, and then taking advantage of the defensive secondary. He's hit Harmon once, he's hit Myers. Sargent to the sideline, and so first and ten for the senior. Pass tipped, incomplete. Jalen Price, the junior on the defensive line. Price goes about 6'2", 300 pounds. He blocked at the line of scrimmage. They tell you, get your hands up, get your hands up. Makes a deflection and nearly an interception, which would be a rarity for this East Carolina defense. Only eight takeaways all season. It's a defense that's improved compared to a season ago. But you're right, not many breaks. Here's Reggie Gillespie. Pick up of about seven. And so third and short again. The, the versatility in this offense is something that really amazes me for NC State. They'll go three wides and you trip formation one side to come back to the other. You've got a guy that can power and it's all bounce out in Gillespie and also Ricky Pearson, who we'll see later on in the game. One of the top offenses in the country. NC State 77 of 155 third down conversions. Already converted one, maybe two. Looks like number two, Jacoby Myers. He moves the sticks. These are really simple routes, and they're trying to look at matchups. That time against Braves, and just try to get him to the outside, I should say, to against uh, Holton and you just kind of get to the outside and try to get enough for the first down. Here's the bruising senior, Gillespie. Still on his feet, down to the 13. Reggie Gillespie, watch this, 5'11", 235 pounds, the human cannonball, bowling ball, fire hydrant. You call it what you want to, he's hard to bring down. That's a well-earned 19-yard run. Right back to him. Pick up of seven. And this will set up another third and short. Reggie Gillespie, you mentioned it earlier. 
He's inching closer to a 1,000 yard season, a fifth year senior. They've had a lot of success in the red zone. Sometimes they'll flip flop the line of scrimmage. This time there's no power. On second and two, and no gain. Nice stop that time, 44, Kendall through trail. They've had a nice season, came in with 31 tackles on the year, very aggressive in the defensive end position, local guy from the Greenville area. There's so many players on both of these teams from Eastern North Carolina, the Triangle area, from the Raleigh area, they want to play well in this football game. It may not have the bowl aspirations or bragging rights that it has in some other years, but it's still the Pirates versus the Pack. Well, both head coaches, Dave Doran, previously Scotty Montgomery, their mission was to keep the best talent in the state. On third and two, and that defense does hold. Gillespie stopped. Alex Turner. Another one of those big guys in the front line for East Carolina. Turner hard to block the time, brings down Gillespie. And a little bit of a win, I think, if you're an ECU fan. They had given up 27 touchdowns in the red zone this year. On 37 different attempts. So to be able to stop them, hold them to a field goal after a very impressive drive would be a huge thing for the Pirates. Chris Dunn, the freshman on, has now made 11 straight field goals. No problems. So ECU's defense strengthens in the red zone. The Wolfpack, though, pick up three on the first possession. So Chris Dunn just connected on his 19th field goal of the season for NC State. And the home team has the early lead. With Stan Luter, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. ECU dealing with dismissal of its head coach, Scotty Montgomery, a couple days ago. David Blackwell is now the interim head coach for the season finale. Stan, how challenging do you think the last couple weeks have been for ECU? This is Trayvon Brown on the return. It's been very challenging. Uh, this is a team that, you know, year three, Scotty practically guaranteed, hey, we're going to a bowl game. Mid-season, they had some tough losses that didn't happen. Things just kind of spiraled out of control. A lot of the best laid plans of mice and men sometimes go astray. This happened in East Carolina. And it's been kind of a cloud over this program for the last three, four, five years. A controversial firing of our former coach Ruffin McNeil. And then you come into this tier, and Scotty just never got, a, got things turned around the pirate way. And hence, you know, there's a dismissal. So it's been tough. Maybe the guys can look at this today as a new slate. And to add on to that, Holton Ehlers, who had started the last five at quarterback for ECU, injured. So here is Reed Herring, the sophomore. And the first down give to Anthony Scott. Well, Holton Ehlers gave them the, the run diversity. He was leading the team in run and rush yards this season for East Carolina. Herring started the season as the number one quarterback. Threw for over 300 yards and a couple of touchdowns against North Carolina A&T. And this didn't continue to develop, and you saw the diversity in his game as Ehlers' game. Aaron's got a strong arm and, and, and a guy that can make some plays. And threw for over 11,000 yards in high school. Watch this. He's got to get comfortable. One of the things you can expect this afternoon is the pressure that NC State can put from the outside. We talked about Pratt being able to make some plays. Stephen Griffin can do it. Isaiah Moore and some outstanding defensive backs are going to pressure him all afternoon. First down, your third down situation for the Pirates. You just saw Jermaine Pratt. He is now back. Missed last week against North Carolina with an injury. Third and seven. The sophomore from Raleigh. Over the middle. And a nice catch. It's Trevon Brown for the first down. Nice job that time. Stand in the pocket by Herring. Feels a little pressure. Steps up. Finds one of the top receivers in the country in a matchup situation against Nick McLeod. Trevon Brown wins that war. Now 72 catches for this next level receiver. Yeah. 
Little behind the intended target, Xavier Smith. And pickup of just one after Nick McLeod made the stop. You look at the cornerbacks for North Carolina State. Ingram had 34 tackles, McLeod 45, Dexter Wright the safety at 44, and then we also talk about Jarius Moorhead. Moorhead is not afraid to hit you. At some point before this game is over, we're going to talk about number 31, Jarius Moorhead, with a big hit, but that was a nice stop by McLeod. to Brown once again. And those two have already connected twice. Go through the air for five yards. Sets up third and short. Talk about Trevon Brown as a guy that's had six games this season where he's had five or more receptions. The all-time, one of the all-time leading receivers in East Carolina football history. You think about all these outstanding receivers to be in the top five is a great accomplishment. He's got the speed to burn and you look for him to get some one-on-one -on -one matchups this afternoon. He's number 88 in the white jersey. Good bunch at the top of your screen. And Herring looks that way. An odd spiral, incomplete fourth down. That'll be the test for Nick McLeod in the Wolfpack. Can they identify Brown on the field at all times and try to take him out of this game? They tried to go a little over the top there to, to Green. And that just was not a good throw by the freshman Green here. And a guy that grew up right, right around the corner practically from Carter Finley Stadium at Millbrook High School. Phenomenal high school career, as we said, over 11,000 yards. You know he's pumped to play here today. His high school, what, maybe 20 minutes down the road. That's all. That's what's that? Just over the road. What's that? <laughs> it's over the way. So NC State starts at the 20. Brian Finley and the offense out for its second drive next. It's a December matchup between NC State and East Carolina. Both teams losing a game in September due to the Hurricanes in the Carolinas and the rescheduled matchup for both teams here. So the regular season ends today for Ryan Finley and the Wolfpack, the first team all ACC selection. On first and 10 from the 20, Finley has all day to scan. Catch is made. Big pickup on first down, and it's Kelvin Harmon again, his second catch. Man, did he have a lot of time. Harmon starts to the top. You're going to see him 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Plenty of time to go from the outside the numbers across the field, and a perfect strike by Ryan Finley. So he's four for six to start. Now he finds his other all-ACC first-team receiver, Jacoby Myers. Four-yard game. This East Carolina pass defense allowed almost 260 yards per game. They're explosive. They give up some big plays, and that's one of the things you've got to be concerned with against this NC State football team. Well, the front seven in that for ECU has been strong this year. They can get to the quarterback. But yeah, they've had some issues in the secondary. Reggie Gillespie bursting into the secondary. Another first down. Bradbury, Fed Jackson. Watch this offensive line. Get off the ball. Push. Come back and get a second block there. You got an inside block by Austin. And they're just controlling the line of scrimmage that of the Wolfpack of NC State. Finley incomplete. Looking for Harmon again. Well, he has all day to throw early in this one. Nate Harvey, we talked about him at the open. The 13 sacks, 24 tackles for loss, leading the nation in those categories. Not much of a factor on his defensive end spot so far in this football game. The Wolfpack doing a nice job of blocking him and getting plenty of time for Finley to look over the defense and throw strikes. He is explosive. Gillespie. 
powerful run, gain of eight. Just take a look at this. I ain't really gonna have to say a whole lot about this. Just watch Reggie Gillespie. Pull, block, bam! This gets rid of a guy, and then he's three or four yards down the, down the field, and there's not a lot you can say about it. Devin Sutton, who's a, a sure tackler for this pirate team, was no match for him. Yeah, look out. <laughs> Sets up third and two. Bodine the tailback. And he makes the catch. Inside the red zone. Perfect play call. Watch the reverse action by Finley. Freezes the linebackers. Bodine sneaks out of the backfield. A nice pickup on the play. And again, another Pirate player down. But Bodine, one of the sure-handed receivers, or backs that comes out of the backfield, can make some plays. And, and this ECU defense is no answer so far. Jalen Price, the injured ECU player on the field. Timeout in Raleigh. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. We can't give up. Please donate now to v.org slash donate. All these donations benefit the V Foundation for Cancer. Everyone has been touched by cancer one way or another in their life. I have, and I'm certain some of you have. I had the opportunity to work with Jim Valvano for a few years. I understood his passion. I understood his care. We've got to find a way to beat cancer. If nothing else, do it in the name of Jim Valvano. What a wonderful man. V, we miss you. Well said. And a powerful message, of course, in this town, in Raleigh. They're going to dedicate the court to Coach Valvano this week, I think, December 4th or 5th. Talked to one of the former players, Ernie Myers, longtime friend, was a part of the national championship, and they've really done a lot of renovations to Reynolds Coliseum, and I think it's going to be named Reynolds Coliseum and Jim Valvano Court. So uh, that's a special thing coming up in the Wolfpack world. But uh, very rarely does a person get to touch your life on a national spectrum two ways. You know, you remember one great play by somebody we talked about nationally. You remember Coach Valvano winning the national championship. So everybody kind of gravitate to that. And then later on in life, gravitated to don't give up in the V Foundation. What a remarkable man. What a remarkable coach. And he's left his legacy that we'll all kind of follow in the footsteps for many, many years to come. And remember, v.org slash donate. On third and 11, Finley, Harmon, touchdown! What a perfect throw. Only one person can get this, this route, and that's going to be Harmon. And he reaches out, beats the defender. Finley, we've said it all afternoon, plenty of time. A nice pass on the money. His 22nd touchdown pass of the season. Wolfpack up by 10. Not many receivers can make that catch. That caps off a nine-play, 80-yard touchdown drive. And the Wolfpack can take a 10-0 lead. Chris Dunn makes it happen. There's a reason why Kelvin Harmon's name is mentioned among those like Torrey Holt, Jericho Cotchery. Take a look at this. 13 career 100-yard reception games. Beats the defender with a little stutter step. Not a lot Holt can do. It's just about laying out there and great concentration for Kelvin Harmon, all ACC performer. 15 catches a couple of weeks ago in the loss against Wake Forest, already off to a great start. Better than 1,000 yards for Harmon. If you're ECU, how in the world do you try to slow down not just Harmon, but Myers as well? You have two to deal with. Well, I told you, they're going to they're gonna pick on those defensive backs. 
linebackers all afternoon. One of the things that I was concerned about it, and we, we, we talked about it, was the pirate pride with this football team. If they get hit in the mouth, will they fight right now? This next drive and their next defensive stand is going to be very, very important, I think, for East Carolina. They've, they've had some bad games lately, the Cincinnati game being one of them. You know, they were in the UCF game in the first half, and all of a sudden UCF blows their doors. Being able to fight back right now, I think, is the foundation for whoever comes in here to find out the spirit of the East Carolina football team and what you're going to be able to do in the future. The record at 3-8. and eight. Scotty Montgomery, the head coach, was relieved of his duties on Thursday morning. David Blackwell, he's now the interim head coach. He met with media that day and explained it's it's an emotional day. And the Pirates had just two days to lock in the emotions and prepare for this one. Five wideouts for Reed Herring. Incomplete. Nowhere for Herring to throw the ball. Good pressure. They took away the initial look that time with Brown. Brown continued to try to take the route and was double covered again, so nothing to do but throw that away. And, and the Pirate offense sputtering. Look like that's Peyton Winstead, who they really are high on at center, is, is down on the play as well for East Carolina. NC State out to the 10-0 lead as picking up big chunks of yardage on the offensive end. Watch that run, great block at the point of attack. Lesby gets over there, kicks up about three or four yards. But look at the strength and the balance that Gillespie has. And, and you're showing that graphic, and you also remember that, East, that NC State has had 12 touchdowns this year. 20 yards or more. So this is a team that can explode and explode in a hurry. And you see, look at that, boom, just knocks over one guy. And the first guy is, here's something we can do at home today as you're watching. Look at the initial contact of Gillespie. First guy is not going to bring him down. It's going to take two or three other guys to bring him in. That's 235 pounds <laughs> coming at you. Second and ten for the sophomore for right here in Raleigh. Great touch on the pass to Trevon Brown. A flag on the sideline. This is Charles Lamartina. Back to the pass. Holding. Defense number 31. The penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. That was Moorhead. We were talking a moment ago about Finley being able to find his primary receiver in Harmon. A nicely thrown ball that time by Reed Harry to Brown. For 26 yards. Crowded backfield, Hassan Howe. And he has a first down run. Being able to score points has not really been a problem for East Carolina in a lot of games. They're averaging just under 25 points a ball game. But being consistent in their scoring has been a problem. Nice drive so far and a key block a moment ago by one of their outstanding wide receivers in Taz Deans. Yeah, you're right. The Pirates are just two weeks removed from hanging up 55 on UConn. And that was a game where both Ehlers and Trace Christian ran for over 100 yards. and First time they'd had 100-yard rushers all season for East Carolina. Even Griffin, the injured Wolfpack, on the play. There's that block right there by, by Todd Deans. It gives a chance for Howe to make a play, and if you get another little inside block there by Anthony Scott, may have been able to take that even further. Did you take it? And Griffin able to get to his feet. That was a great look we showed you, almost bordering the blindside block rule. And it falls under the targeting realm. Get to the outside. There's the block. Yes, yeah, so that's that's shoulder to shoulder. 
and he's in fact lowered his own head to make certain that there is that. And then when he hit him, he kind of pulls up, like make sure I, I, I'm clear. And so Griffin walking on his own power to the sideline. Forty-nine passing yards for Herring. The reverse back to Herring, and it's dropped. Looking for Brown again. He's usually automatic. Well, he's caught 71 this year and another three this afternoon. I don't think you can get too mad at him, but this is one he just does not watch in his hands completely. Love the action. A nice block right there. That kind of gives Heron the opportunity. May have could have run it. Ball's a little bit behind Brown and away. Not able to pull it, but I like the idea of East Carolina trying to open up the playbook this afternoon. Yep. Couple first downs on this drive. Pratt coming unblocked. And that's too far for Taj Deans. So third down coming up. Welcome back, Jermaine Pratt. Man, did you see Pratt? Jermaine Pratt, 6'3", 240 pounds, grad. All ACC lays the lumber to Herring. He had to get rid of the football. ECU has to get to the 27. Nice pocket, strong throw, ball is on the ground. A flag just behind Taj Deans, who's the intended target. This may be on NC State. Offside, defense number 97. Five yard penalty, third down. And Xavier Elias got a little too excited about the possibility of hitting Reed Herring. You know, and so he jumps just a step, but a very nice pass that time by Harry. Dean's unable to make it, then makes his third down, third to about five, makes it more manageable. Second time NC State's been flagged on this drive. ECU declined the first, and here's the extra play, third and five. Harry airs it down the sideline, it's intercepted. Nick McLeod. Almost a 50-yard return for the junior from South Carolina. Steps up, throws this ball in coverage there. Good job defensively by McLeod to get just a little bit of contact with Brown. The ball goes in there and he does the rest. Nice job of blocking. No one blocks in the back. 49 yards later. NC State, the defense stepping up once again and making a play. He charges it loose and he comes up with the football. Second interception of the season for McLeod. You saw a couple looks at the play. The question is, did McLeod step out of bounds? It was about the, what, 20 or 30-yard line. Good coverage there. Watch the ball there. And keep your eyes on about the 20, about the 30. Nothing there. Mm. Right there, though. Yep. This could be coming back to about the 25. But still a great play defensively by Nick McLeod, his second interception of the season. We talked about it earlier. One of the better defensive backs for this NC State Wolfpack team. Maybe their quickest cover corner on this football team. He's from Rock Hill, South Carolina. A football hotbed for <laughs> talent. That's for sure. Yeah. Don't even have to say anything. We'll take another look here. Right there. He's fully on the line. A 
Right, ECU has had a problem taking care of the football this year. And it's turnover margin, one of the worst in the country. That's Herring's 10th interception that he's thrown this year. And that, that, that amazes me, you know, and you can't talk about the past, really. You know, this is the present. But the East Carolina defense, they used to hang their head After on defense review, back in the day. The ruling of the interception is confirmed. However, the defender did step out of bounds at the 25-yard line. The ball will be placed there. It'll be NC State's ball, first and 10. Please reset the game clock to 3-0-5. Yeah, I think the thing, on the game the thing clock, they please. were trying to check on was probably where the ball exactly would be and in the time of the, of the, uh, of the game. So they got there to 3 5 first and 10 at the 25, and another turnover. And I think we, as we were talking about Reed Herring and 10 interceptions, the East Carolina nails a minus 15 turnover count this year. And then it just it just doesn't it doesn't add up when you think about East Carolina football, East Carolina defensively football. Now ECU sitting at three wins for a third straight year. Down 10 zip. Back on defense. There's Reggie Gillespie. Coming off that five-touchdown game a week ago. Just against your rival, North Carolina. And the emotion there that this East Carolina team has gone through all season long. The tough loss at the beginning of the season against North Carolina A&T, which is a really good football team. And then the upset of North Carolina at the time. They've been up and down, just like this drive. A good drive that ends in disaster. Can the defense rise? Finley. Another catch for Jacoby Myers. And the junior from Georgia moves the sticks. We can talk about a lot of things thinking offensively for this, this team. 10,000 yards, Brian Finley's thrown. I am amazed at how quickly he gets the football out of his hands. He's got really nice vision, stands strong in the pocket, and receivers that run really good routes. And another good catch that time for Myers for a first down. Another catch. Ameka Amezi for about seven yards. Got these defensive corners backwards on a rocking chair they give too much cushion they're afraid they'll get beat deep if you don't give enough they're throwing underneath and picking up five six seven yards a clip finally on second and three finds Myers again and another first down Picking apart the defense on this drive. Just finding areas open against the zone and just sitting there and again the timing of the, uh, the quarterback to his receivers. And you can't talk about it enough, but the time that Finley has in the pocket, uniform not dirty at all. He has four, four or five year players on that offensive line. And now Finley's name sits next to Phil Rivers. The two to throw for more than 10,000 yards in their careers at NC State. Empty backfield. Down the sideline. And Myers again. Finley checks out of the play. Sees he's got in coverage across the board. Myers matched up against Robinson and just drops it in. Another big play of 33 yards, and the, and the hits just keep coming right now for NC State. Eight of Finley's completions to Myers or Harmon. What else is new? Gillespie, he said you can't bring him down in the first try. He's in again. His 17th touchdown of the season. Line of scrimmage, they blow off, get an inside block there, and boom, boom, bam, touchdown. Yeah, that's me. I'm here. I'm here again. I'm here again. Reggie Gillespie, Jr. Dave Doran highlighted this to us this week, his heart's. His career can be summed up by his grit, 
in his heart. He earns everything he has gained this season. 17-0 first quarter lead for the Wolfpack. Just think about the possibility of the tide turning. You could be a 10-7 ball game. You get the interception, and, and NC State wastes very little time in being able to score. Now tied for sixth in program history with 28 career rushing touchdowns. We saw Matt Days do it and Jalen Samuels the last couple seasons in Gillespie in his final year playing in this stadium for the last time. For most of his career, he played behind Jalen Samuels. So now to, to just break out. 17 touchdowns. He scored a touchdown in 10 of the 12 games rushing this season. And who can forget last Saturday's five touchdown game winner? And the fifth in overtime to defeat the Tar Heels. NC State sitting there at, at 8 and 3. Started 5 and 0. Oh, had a tough loss on the road to Clemson. And at Syracuse. The hit scratcher against Wake Forest just a couple weeks ago, but. NC State has bounced back with consecutive wins. Could end the year on a three-game win streak. Maybe nine wins for a second straight year for Dave Dorn. Playing for bowl position right now. Playing for pride, boom. Playing for bowl position. Love to get a New Year's Day bowl. Last time Reed Herring took a snap, he threw an interception. Now to the flat, Xavier Smith. Picks up four. Some words exchanged between Smith and Inkle. NC State's offense rolling in the finale at Carter Finley Stadium. 17 0. In Raleigh this afternoon, the regular season finale for NC State. And for East Carolina. And it was a first quarter stand that certainly was dominated by the Wolfpack. They moved the football very well. They used all their weapons. Speed, power to the line of scrimmage, throwing over the top. And then they made great defensive plays. And then the interception that scores again. So East Carolina has now got to step their game up. Reed Herring put together a strong drive previously that ended in the interception. Trace Christian. It's the carry. Third and five coming up for the Pirates. One out of three on third down today. The underneath routes can be successful in the East Carolina offense. You've got backs that can catch out of the backfield. This has got to be one where you recognize the defense and get rid of the football. Anthony Scott's in the backfield along with Herring. Pass caught, but short. It's a long distance to throw for a short yardage play. And if you're a wide receiver, you must go to the sticks. Finds us, cuts that out too short. Ball's a bit underthrown nonetheless, and so East Carolina is off the field. You gotta take your routes, especially in a third down situation, third and less than six. You gotta take your routes outside the sticks and come back to the football. You gotta be able to get that first down. He caught it, but still three, four yards short. John Young to boot it away on fourth down. Thayer Thomas awaits. A chance at a return for Thomas. Down at the 43. Great field position for the Wolfpack again early in the second. NC State's offense has been very sharp. Ryan Finley has completed 11 of his 15 passes. A couple days ago, he finished third 
And the voting for ACC Player of the Year. Over 10,000 yards. He spent the last few seasons running Dave Doran's offense. In his final game at Carter Finley Stadium. On the rollout, it's Myers again. Good block from Harmon. Another big play for the Wolfpack. Finley reverse action freezes the defense here. Everybody's flowing one way. He's able to go the other way. A nice block downfield by Harmon. And then the rest is just great athleticism by Myers. A good job. A pickup of 31, and they're rolling again. Gillespie, nice skate. Ah, the first down carry. But Kevin, did you see what they're talking about? The reverse pivot and all the defenders from East Carolina go with the fake motion of the quarterback, and he's able to step up, get his shoulders around. You've got one-on-one -on -one coverage, and you've got, what did I like? A blocking receiver for another receiver, first down, 31 yards away. You have to respect Gillespie. You have to. Ten plays for NC State today have gone for already ten or more yards. It's early in the second. Back to the bruising tailback. And nice job by the Pirates. Slowing him for no game. Things are getting a little chippy down on the field right now. East Carolina, all the frustration of a long season. You look at that, 123 to 58. They've been outscored in the first quarter. And going into this game, they've been outscored 243 to 145 in the first half of ball games. They've been playing behind often, and sometimes these scores have gotten ugly. 42 to 6, I think it was a halftime last week versus Cincinnati. Yep, trying to bounce back from that loss. A very good Cincinnati Bearcats team. Myers reaching. They say touchdown. Three wide, get it to your outstanding receiver, Myers. Breaks away from a tackle, stretches out. Once the ball breaks the plane, it's a touchdown. So we're going to give this six to Myers. His fourth touchdown of the season. And now NC State. How about its skill players? Harmon, Myers, Gillespie all with a touchdown in the first half. Our officials are going to check to make sure that Myers did cross the plane. Well, keep in mind, it's like a little plate of glass, and once that ball touches, the glass is broken. So right there, I think his, and you can see his torso, his shoulders are across the end zone. So this should be a touchdown. The ground can't cause a fumble, and even if it did, the ball was recovered by North Carolina State. So I think all this points to red in the end zone. The ball did come loose, but to your point, all Gillespie had to do was have it secured when he broke the plane. If he fumbles it after that yeah, point, I think he did that. Matter. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. I think he did that. But the moment that ball touches the goal line, and he's in control, it's a touchdown. If you take a look right there he's got it does come oh. loose a little bit right there it does come loose right there you have Thayer Thomas who pounces on now, it here's my question here's my question for you Thomas recovers that but did the East Carolina defender touch the ball while he was out of bounds let's take another look at this losing it right there okay now the ball bounces up no 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 I didn't touch it after further review, the rolling of the field stands. It is a touchdown. And so it's Myers' yeah, touchdown. Yeah, I am. Now 1,000 yards this season for the redshirt junior from Lithonia, Georgia. Already eight catches today.
Kelvin Harmon and Jacoby Myers, two 1,000-yard receivers. And you just have to take your quarterback, Ryan Finley, out to dinner once or twice. <laughs> it is rare to have two 1,000-yard receivers on the same team. NC State does, and the Wolfpack lead it 24-0. A flag at the end of the extra point. The point at the touchdown is good. During the play, personal foul, roughing the kicker, defense. A 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. NC State to kickoff at the 50. Jacoby Myers, versatile, dynamic, another touchdown. Jacoby Myers, fourth touchdown of the season, gives NC State a 24-0 advantage. And he makes sure to show some love to the fans and a good crowd on this December 1st game that was not originally on the schedule between NC State and ECU. And so the Wolfpack faithful, as expected, out here for Ryan Finley's final game at Carter Finley Stadium. And after the penalty of the extra point. Kickoff at the 50. Of course, that one is booted through the end zone. Now, ECU has struggled. In the first quarter, in the second quarter. And it has struggled to stick with some of the elite teams on its schedule. 390 points. This Pirate team has given up, and, and you know you mentioned it early in the game. The defense is much better than it was last year, believe it or not, as far as the numbers go. Worst in the NCAA. Aaron gets it away, and it's underthrown. He had heavy pressure coming at him, looking for Taj Deeds. It really has to come down to. Reed Herring having the time to step up in the pocket and throw. Yeah, and sadly right now, they've abandoned the run game. The run game could help establish some passing yardage, but they're not able to do that. They're behind the chains immediately, and this is making it really easy defensively for North Carolina State. Here's Anthony Scott. And shouldered out after a pickup of about eight yards. Chris Ingram. Knocked him out of balance. Anthony Scott's a guy that's, that's had a decent season. Came in having rushed for over 355 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Three, in fact. Had a nice game in their win against UConn as well as their win against North Carolina. And he's a young guy that, that can be explosive. Been in and out of the Pirate lineup throughout his career. He wants to go out with a bang. That was a nice explosive play for East Carolina and Anthony Scott. The Wolfpack remember him. He scored the game winner against NC State two years ago. ECU. Take Timeout ECU time out of on third and short. Timeout on the field. Reed Herring has a moment to contemplate the next play. Big first down needed. A third and two coming up for ECU after the timeout. David Blackwell, the defensive coordinator hired last December. He is now the interim head coach today after Scotty Montgomery's dismissal as the head coach on Thursday. It's a pass. Scott drops it, and that may have been perhaps behind the line. I think they're calling this a lateral, fumbled lateral, and I think NC State is recovering. If it was ruled, a backwards pass, and the Wolfpack have it. That's the second turnover today. ECU does recover it. So that was a live ball in fourth down coming up. So the screen pass. Too long to develop, you know, not, not trying to second or third guess, but they've got to be able to take advantage of the angles and get some leverage to the corner. And you remember the third down pass earlier was underneath, was too shallow. That plays too far to the backside. And, and NC State had it well defended and very fortunate for East Carolina. They didn't turn the ball over deep in their territory once again. Pirates still haven't converted a, thir a, a third down. Pardon. Oh, 
Thayer Thomas had a nice punt return last time out there. Calls for the fair catch this time. Two hundred and eighty-one yards of total offense for this offense. And a touchdown on all four possessions to begin today for NC State. I mean, Stan, you have 11 plays of 10 or more yards already. <laughs> That's one out of every three. You know, you know, you know, I really feel for is A.J. Colt, the punt. He's had nothing to do. I mean, what, what do you do if you're, if you're cold? Do you, you know, you help shag balls or something? Uh, Very selfish camp, of Ryan camp. Finley. Yeah, I mean, like, he's had no work. It is Brady Bodine had a catch out of the backfield earlier and nowhere to go on the first down run. You were asking about Nate Harvey. He's there on the stop. First time we've called his name as far as making a play this afternoon. And Nate Harvey couldn't have come at a big time. Another tackle for loss. And the emotional leader defensively for these East Carolina Pirates, big number 40, his 60th tackle of the season. And he leads the country in tackles for loss. He was a running back two years ago. David Blackwell, we mentioned earlier, he identified Harvey and said, we need you. Thayer Thomas, a big play, another. And the Wolfpack are past midfield. You're talking about Harvey being a walk-on. Thayer Thomas, also a walk-on. A local guy, picks up 29 on this play and basically goes out the line of scrimmage with, with very little defense, finds a little hole in the secondary and gets yet another North Carolina State first down. And he's become one of the crowd favorites here at NC State. His first game as a walk had nine catches and a touchdown. Gillespie. Reggie Gillespie to the 32. 17 yards on the run. These chunks of yards, 29 through the air, 17 here. This offensive line averages about 315 pounds per man, and they just do a great job of finding holes and creating holes. Prescott, Bradbury, Fed Johnson goes about 330 pounds, and then you've got Gillespie, who's a load at 335, big as one of the linemen, and he just finds a hole and picks it. And 10, 12 yards later, he's moving. Reggie Gillespie may hit 1,000 yards today, perhaps. Another strong surge. Devin Sutton stopped him behind line. Two-yard loss. If there's any shrewd tackler on this East Carolina team, maybe other than Harvey, Bruce Blivens being one of those is Devin Sutton. Finley, the captain, motions Devontae Rem out of the backfield. Pass incomplete. And Aaron Ramsor may have caught a piece of it. A sophomore linebacker looking for Myers. Ramsor does a nice job of dropping in coverage, reads that pass to Myers, is able to get a hand on it, forcing NC State into a third down situation. Haven't had many of those this afternoon. So now, if you're Finley, you just take your pick. Do you want to go to Thomas? Do you want to go to Harmon? Do you want to go to Myers? That was Thomas in motion. Finley gets hit for the first time today, and it's a sack. Jalen Price was there to lead the way. First time he's hit the ground this afternoon. Good job in coverage on the secondary and not able to get away. Jalen Price, I think along with Futrell, may have gotten a hand in there as well. But nevertheless, a big stop for the East Carolina Pirates. Trayvon Brown back deep. You asked for A.J. Cole and for the first time today. So I talked him up. Huh? <laughs> the senior has been fantastic in his career and Thomas is there to pin ECU inside the 10. Boy, almost half of A.J. Cole's punts have wound up inside the 20-yard line. What do you think today is like for David Blackwell hired 
as a defensive coordinator a year ago. Now he's the interim head coach today. Well, on a personal note, he's excited for the opportunity. Very disappointed on how he got there. He's been in this situation before when he was at Clemson. He was on the staff there at Clemson and under Dabo Sweeney when they made the change to Dabo from Tommy Bowden. So he understands it. What he wants to do is get this team to play hard and keep the Pirates together. He said it was an emotional day on Thursday. Oh, yeah. And think about it, you know, you, this is your first year. And not only from the field standpoint of taking over for this team, but think of all these East Carolina coaches. They, they're on a year contract. They don't know exactly what their future holds. You know, East Carolina's got to hire a coach. they got to hire a new athletic director. A lot of things are going on in Greenville. So there's a lot of unknowns. But I know what you got to do. Go out there and play hard football. This could be your last game if you're a senior or not. Play it like it is your last. Play hard. Second and seven. Trace Christian picks up three. So third and four upcoming. And when you look at this East Carolina team, obviously the quarterback situation, we've got two solid guys in the Aylers along with Herring. Trace Christian is one of those guys. He's a redshirt freshman. We're very, very excited about it. Has had some good ball games. As we mentioned, had the 100-yard rushing game plus versus UConn a couple of weeks ago. And they're really excited in the East Carolina camp about some of these young guys. Today will be a great day to kind of put the pieces in line for 2019. Third down and four for Herring. Good pocket. Pass dropped again. Looking for Terrell Green. That would have been a first down. And Terrell Green, normally a sure-handed receiver for this East Carolina team. Heard footsteps that time. A nice pass by Herring. And Green takes his eye over. I think he saw out of the corner of his eye a couple of red shirts led by Jarius Moorhead. And they're stopped again. So just 15 yards for ECU on its last three drives. And John Young, the former West Virginia Mountaineer, to boot it away. What a hit. Great coverage on special teams for ECU. Cannon Gibbs, one of the leaders. Gibbs had a couple of big tackles last week in the Cincinnati game. Put this down as another one. Great fundamentals. Breaks down. Receiver catches the ball. I hit the receiver. That's what I'm talking about. Tough day for Ryan Finley. <laughs> He's been terrific. 219 <laughs> yards. And he has gone for 300 or more through the air. In his last few, he is over 3,000 yards for a third straight season. He and Dave Doran have had great success over the last three seasons. This could be another nine-win season for the Wolfpack. Maybe for the first time in more than 25 years, back-to-back -back years of nine or more wins. On first down, Finley, another completion. And it's Kelvin Harmon, the junior from New Jersey. You look at his numbers and you're just amazed. This could be pushing upon his eighth 300-yard passing game of the afternoon. You know, he's going to rank number two all-time in most statistical categories at North Carolina State, only behind Phillip Rivers. The transfer from Boise State's already graduated. Yep. A very smart young man, and, and again, has a lot of the tools. He's got some size. He's got strength. A very good head on his shoulders. Look at that. Gets rid of the football. Very accurate on his throws. Ameka Abezi. What specific trait would you say is, is that next level, that NFL trait that Ryan Finley has? He's smart. He understands the game. And as we said, he's got a very, very active arm. And you see, he puts the ball in the position. He throws a catchable ball. You can get the football. He throws his receivers open a lot of times. That pass is get low, away from the defense. Look at this. Steps up in the pocket. That's a cross to numbers. That's a 30 yard pass that he's very accurate with. Good so. foot. And one of the things that he's really done a nice job of throughout his career and continue to work on is his footwork. Like drink with the offensive coordinator has done a really good job in stressing his footwork, his accuracy, his timing. And you notice it on throws like that. Brady Bodine, he's stamped 
And after a short gain, so third and three coming up. Many expect Ryan Finley is going to be the first quarterback called next May by Roger Goodell. No team in the ACC better than NC State on third down. Three yards to go. They've had a lot of success with this formation. Trips left. The pass, a little too far. Looking for a Mezzi again. The rare misfire. So fourth down. Mezzi did a nice job of getting open. Started his route to the post and tries to break that out just a little bit. Finley feeling maybe a little pressure that time. Wanted to get the ball out quickly. But yet, this could be, what, five possessions, five scores for the Wolfpack? From 41 for the freshman, Chris Dunn. Flag out of the Pirates. And remember, that's a fourth down and three. Mm. This will move the six. Defense number 96. That five-yard penalty results in the first down. Wow. I mean, that, that says it all for this East Carolina season right there. That, that, that says it all. Like, oh, my goodness, and a whole bunch of things I can't say on the air. And no one a tougher critic of Jalen Price right now than Jalen Price. It was only giving up about 50 yards a game. It was sixth best in the AAC as far as penalties. Been a pretty disciplined team. Here's the trick. Myers has nowhere to go. Bivens finished him off. It was Purvis who slowed him down in the back in the backfield. So second and 23. Trying to get Myers to make the pass to Finley and keep your eye on, on Bivens. Comes out there and reads that and makes a good play, a solid play. A little something to be proud about right there for the East Carolina Pirates. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. The Pirates went with that reverse flea flicker earlier this game. Now NC State tries the trickery. A little Philly special that time. It's all the pack <laughs> special. Boy, what Doug Peterson and Nick Foles have done for offenses. This one is picked off. Right into Daniel Charles' hands. You needed a play. You needed some reason to be excited. And you take a look for the end zone. Finley does, really doesn't see that. I'm sure if the receiver may have been a little bit misguided and didn't break over the middle like he anticipated, but a perfect throw nonetheless this time to Charles. Gets his first interception as a freshman, and maybe that will excite Purple Passion. It's the turnover that the Pirates have needed. And so, yes, a lopsided score, but a chance to go into that locker room, perhaps down maybe 17 as opposed to any more than that. Herring's pass is tipped. Jermaine Pratt. Here he's got to understand he cannot outrun Pratt. And so when you feel pressure, you've got to get rid of that football. That was nearly disastrous a lot of ways. Pratt too quick. The leading tackle in the ACC gets his hands up. Ball goes in the air. Pratt nearly could pick that off possibly. But again, you got to, you got to get rid of that under pressure versus a guy like a Pratt. You can't outrun him. That's the first team all ACC selection. Herring finds how a gain of about six. A combo route that time, send one receiver deep and bring how underneath. Here as a valve receiver finds him, throws underneath, makes his third down manageable. That was only the fifth interception all season by the East Carolina Pirates. The other Pirates facing another third down, third and four. Aaron, 8 of 17 through the air. Needs to convert. A rifle over the middle. 
That was Taj Deans. The ball is loose. The question was, did he secure it when he hit the ground? I think he did. We'll get another look at Deans. I think as he catches it, he begins to kind of turn his hips. Watch it at, at the point of impact. See, he's got control, got the ball down, and basically gives himself up and the ball pops loose. So they could say it in completion, but East Carolina hurries to line of scrimmage. He's to get this off. Too late. Yep. A timeout taken by NC State. This is a 30-second timeout. Does he secure the ball completely to the ground? That will be the question. And if he does have control and that elbow hits, the play is dead. The play is dead, exactly. If he's bobbling it, the ball is out. But see, here's, here's, here's the thing as we take a look again, and you be the judge at home. Foot down, foot down. Previous play. And then I Clean think when he hits the ground, the ball pops out. But see, what, what I would say in that situation, in a game like this, there's no doubt. It's an automatic call. Get to the line of scrimmage. Just run a play. Let's run a play. You know? It's a fire call. Boom, boom, boom. Everybody wide, boom. Somebody go deep, somebody go underneath. But you don't want to stop in the event that they rule this an incompletion. Take your momentum away for East Carolina. The momentum that Daniel Charles helped spin back in ECU's direction. He picked off a Ryan Finley pass. Uh, busted her out earlier. So here's Deans' catch. Bottom left corner of the screen. That ball looked like it bounced out and maybe touched the ground. The quick little shot. We had an East Carolina guy that kind of shielded us from the football. But I thought I saw a ball. Brown on green. You can see this again. Take a look real, real quick. I have quick eyes right now. See the ball bounce. Man, I'm glad I'm up here and all I got to do is talk about whatever they call. <laughs> it's clear that that ball is bouncing loose. It, you know, from the first angle, it looked it like looked, the yeah. elbow was down, but... They can piece that together. What are you going, What's your call? Well, if it's simultaneous arm and ball hitting the ground at the same time, this could be the incompletion. Yeah. I can see football there. Well, the question is definitive evidence. That it's you know an incompletion. I, I, it's the last football game at home with Carter Finley. I'm going to go on the record and say it was an incompletion. <laughs> that's not, that's a, I said it. I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> Again, ruled a catch on the field. Yeah. Folks, Stan Luter on the record. Yeah. I said it. <laughs> David Blackwell. I got is two shots at this, right? <laughs> It's not algebra, 50-50 shot. Thank goodness for that. Don't say that. Don't say algebra around <laughs> Don't say that word. Well, David Blackwell's team needs this play. And for Pirates' sake, I hope it's a completion. But I'm going on the record saying it's incomplete with 134 to go in the second quarter. After further review, the rolling of the field has changed. The receiver did not complete the process of a catch, and this is an incomplete pass. Will be placed back at the original line of scrimmage. Will be fourth down and five. Please reset the game clock to 147. 147 on the game clock, please. Right on, partner. North Carolina State is restored of their timeout. They have three. And with that, I'll say goodbye. <laughs> Done. We'll, we'll get better than that today. <laughs> well, ECU now faced with a fourth and seven. And that is a brutal swing. The Pirates were past midfield. And instead, the fifth punt for John Young. And what have I said the theme has been in this game has been like this season? You get the, you get a high, and then you have a low. You get, the, you get the first down, you get a drive, you get some points on the board before halftime. Now, East Carolina has got to play good defense, and, and NC State's offensive in the and they can put them away on this next drive, possibly. Thomas muffed it. That ball is live. 
ECU football. He just bit it, Boateng. Number 95 gets the recovery up here. Say Thomas Foss in the sun, but it's a cloudy day. Gives a fair catch. This ball kind of moves on him a little bit at the end. Gets him up in the chest, bounces up, and there's Big Botang with the recovery. Taj Deans is saying, see, it all works out. ECU essentially is going to now start a new series where Deans had previously thought he made a catch. Yeah, really. Here we go, first and ten. And yeah, this play, uh, all sorts of issues. Blown up in the backfield. Darian Roseboro was there to lead the charge. No room for Howe on the run. Loss of seven. Another one of those outstanding defensive linemen for North Carolina State. Roseboro gets upfield, gets a great push, and then he's got help with his teammates coming in there and trying to make a play. That's Tanner Engel, the nickel. Who's open? And that pass short again a couple times today. Herring is under throwing the receiver. A Brown. Long way to throw across the field. NC State rushed three that time, dropped eight in the coverage. Got to find those little areas, and that time the ball just too far in the air, not enough on it. And the, the big break that the Pirates had a moment ago may go away. Third down and long. A Raleigh native who started the first six games for ECU. Now out there with Holton Ehlers, sideline with a knee injury. Needs something on third down. Wrangled down. Deontay Holden. Holden gets off the ball quickly. Just grabs him, says, come here. I'm bringing you down. That's my fourth sack of the season. And the NC State defense has the turnover on them and comes back, gets their first sack of the afternoon, and they raise their level. This defense has been one of the best defenses, especially against the run in the country, especially in the ACC. And you saw Taj Holden, a grad transfer that comes in and makes another huge play for the Wolfpack. NC State 11 to the country in total sacks. And that occurring a year after its entire defensive line was drafted. Really? <laughs> and that just shows the talent that Dave Doran and his coaching staff have yeah. not just brought to Raleigh, but also. It's seven games this year. You think about who they played. Well, they've had three sacks or more at five against Florida State four against Virginia in the game they won here and also four against Wake. The defense has done their job, and that's a good possession there for the Wolfpack. A fair catch and stay away from this one. Twenty-four nothing lead for NC State. Eleven to the country. And the ironic twist is ECU actually has more sacks than NC State, but the Wolfpack have the big advantage, 45 seconds to go until halftime. This is what makes this NC State team so tough. And it lets you also know how strong the Clemson team is. Because this team, you know, they got a few weeks. They've got a solid defense, an offense that can score in a moment's notice from almost anywhere in the field, and really good special teams. And when you've got all three down the line, you've got a chance to win a lot of football games. A strike over the middle to Kelvin Harmon. And hurry up. And good luck, Pittsburgh, later tonight, to your point. The ACC title game in Charlotte. Amezi is able to pick up a couple more on the play. The next big... Outstanding receiver, Emeka Emezi. They talk about his explosiveness and being able to make plays in the open field. Came in with 42 catches, had five touchdowns. A, a strong guy, 6'3", about 210 pounds. Only a sophomore. Get better and better as time goes. The deep ball on first down. Too far for Harmon.
Colby Gore, who's been involved in some big defensive plays this season for East Carolina. That time was matched up with Harmon and did a good job of not letting him turn the corner and get deep. Well defended by the Pirates. So 19 seconds for the Wolfpack. Two timeouts to play with as well. Ball at midfield. Amezi sidesteps his man. Out of bounds at about the 26. There he is again for 24. Roger Robinson showed blitz and then dropped out of it and dropped deep. And Finley recognized that Amezi was going to be in man and also the room that he had and just took his time, found the open receiver, and Amezi does the rest on another nice catch. Stan, now more than 300 passing yards for Ryan Finley in the first half. Yeah. <laughs> 11 seconds, plus the two timeouts. Bodine, the tailback. Another catch. And down to the 11. And NC State can take that timeout. And this time it's C.J. Riley, his first catch of the day for 15. And a chance to go into the locker room, leading by 27 if Chris Dunn can hit. What a first half for Ryan Finley. He has been sharp today. To the ground one time by my count. I'm gonna try to go deep, I'm gonna try to get in, Dunn will tip the field go. Dave Dorn has something special in Chris Dunn. Take it! A freshman from Lexington, North Carolina. He has just tied the single season field goal mark. He now has 20 made this season. 27 point lead for NC State. Two seconds left. Perfect when leading at the half. I'll say. <laughs> wow. Over 300 yards passing. 400 total offense. Defense has come up with big plays. Special teams are doing what they've got other than the fumble. That's the only thing you got really to say negative maybe about the NC State first half performance. East Carolina's had some opportunities to stem the tide and not able to do so. in the return game. The Wolfpack aiming for back-to-back -back nine win seasons for the first time in 26 years. For the first time all year, ECU shut out in the first half. And NC State behind Ryan Finley with an offensive surge. Ryan Finley already with his eighth 300 yard passing game after two quarters. Wolfpack rolling. Welcome back to the Capital One Halftime Report in Raleigh. NC State two quarters away from its second straight nine-win season. The offense rolling in the first half. Stan Luter, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. Ryan Finley was as sharp as he's been in his career at NC State today. Wow. I mean, you know, we're talking about the fact that he had seven 300-yard-plus games already this season. He's got that in the first half. The offense has been clicking every way possible. They've made timely plays on defense. Their special teams have even been special. It's been total domination by the Wolfpack. 
big plays too. Yeah. 11 plays of 15 or more yards for the Wolfpack. Reggie Gillespie. And, hard yeah, to he's down. a stat stuffer. I mean, we talked about how do you bring this guy down? I mean, he's got inside moves, takes a hit right there, and he's able to lean for it for three or four more yards. And then Finley, this is an absolute phenomenal play. This could be a top 10 catch right there. Harmon with the 14 yard reception. East Carolina had a chance to put something on the board, had a drive and a deflection by McLeod. And then he catches the ball and takes it about 49 yards and it sets up more NC State scoring. And again, you just go inside the Gillespie. The offensive line has done a great job of dominating the line of scrimmage, giving Finley time to throw the football. And when you throw the ball, good things happen. There's a play. Gets in the end zone, drives in and scores, and that's Myers, and they're just spreading it out. And I mean, the numbers don't lie. There they are. 329 passing yards in the first half for NC State. Now, Reed Herring, he did have some shining moments. ECU starting quarterback in the first half. What do the Pirates need to do to establish something offensively? Well, we talked about it at the beginning of this football game. They call it Pirate Pride, Pirate Nation. You guys got to step up right now. I'm challenging them to go out and play better in the second half. No more mental mistakes. It's the last half of football, the last half of the season. Play hard. Make some plays. Pray some pride. And the NC State just continue to do what you're doing, dominating. David Blackwell, the interim head coach, he is trying to push the Pirates. Hard to stop Ryan Finley. Three straight 3,000-yard seasons. He's out there for the second half. Next. You are watching the ACC on ESPN at Carter Finley Stadium this afternoon. Now time for the Capital One fan votes. Who else? It's Alabama's ace quarterback, Tua Tunga Viola. He has a relatively big game later this evening. Alabama sitting number one, as it has been much of the year in the college football playoff rankings. One against four tonight in the SEC championship game. If Georgia has any chance of playing more football in the college football playoff, it has to beat Alabama and do what no other team has done this season. East Carolina shut out in the first half for the first time all year. And Tony Peterson's offense has shown some flashes at times. Turned the ball over once in the first half. Reed Herring, he starts today for the first time in over a month. Holton Ehlers, who had started the last five, out with a knee sprain. And Herring, the sophomore, hands off to Anthony Scott on first down. And no game. Establishing the ground game, that's been difficult for ECU this year. 73 yards of total offense for East Carolina in the first half. You talked about Herring replacing Ehlers. Herring had started several ball games early in the year, started the first game through for 309 yards, went back to back with touchdowns. So he's got the ability, but he's not had the time. The ground game's not been there. And, and NC State has just done pretty much what they've wanted to do on the line of scrimmage. Rushing just three. Holding it too long. Got to get rid of it. Who's open? And that pass may have even been deflected at the line. I hate to talk over a play, but I mean, that was, I mean, you've got a receiver in the flat, and it would have been better than a loss. Toss it to the receiver. I think that may have been Scott. You kind of stretch the play, and all you're doing is really falling into the defense's hands. They're doing a great job of coverage. There's nowhere to throw the ball, and, and Vines is not able to come up with a, with a hard catch. Just one third down conversion for ECU today. Pressure. Fourth down. Herring went one way, Brown the other. Nick McLeod and company has already had an interception. Comes up and puts a little pressure to the outside. And Herring, feet not set. And we talked about it also in the earlier part of this ball game. We talked about what you liked about Finley. One of those things, his feet, his footwork. His foot's like, Herring never gets set. He's back paddling. He's throwing off his back foot a little bit. No rhythm in what he's doing, and it forces yet another incompletion. Herring, just a sophomore, and he's playing in his hometown. 
And it has been difficult to move the football against a very stout defense. Thomas, the fair catch, so NC State begins at the 33. You're not picking on hearing, you're just pointing out some of the subtle differences in why one quarterback is able to, you know, with a stable receiver, is maybe complete some passes, and another young quarterback who's got a lot of talent and some arm strength not able to maybe do something. Simple as that. Ryan Finley in the first half, maybe as accurate as he has been at his best this season. Fakes to Gillespie. Myers, another catch, his ninth, but a pickup of just two. Solid coverage by Colby Gore out of the play. First game of the season, which was a bit of a struggle, James Madison. Myers had 14 catches for 161 yards. Today, you know, just kind of continuing the end of the season, his ninth catch. I anticipate him having double-digit receptions by the end of this ball game. And he leads the team and catches. Gillespie waiting for the hole to open up. Another first down run. He glides out of bounds. He's pushing 100 yards. We talk about Gillespie being so hard to bring down. But watch 66, Fed Johnson right there with a kick out block. And it just makes it easy. He's got a head of steam going. You're not going to bring him down like that. I ain't jumping in his way. I'm not getting out there and trying to tap him like that. 5'11", 235 pounds. He He's still going downhill. <laughs> he still has some Tar Heels head spinning after five touchdowns last week at Keenan Stadium. Two-yard gain right back to Gillespie. Uh, Dave Doran said that to us this week. Everything that Gillespie has earned, yeah. he deserves. Grit. He played behind a few solid running backs the last few years. This season, though, he has been the primary option at tailback, and he has put together a fine season. He's an outstanding back at Southern Gifford High School in the Greensboro area, rushed for over 7,000 yards, but had to wait his turn. And when the opportunity came for him, being this year, has done an outstanding job, you know, approaching his fourth 100-yard rushing game back-to-back -back from last week also. Finley elusive, evading Cannon Gibbs, incomplete. Third and eight. Watch 44, Kendall Futre. He's a sure tackler. He gets his hand, and we talk about the footwork, step, a spin out of it, and is able to get rid of the football. Instead of taking about a seven or eight yard loss, Finley gets an incompletion and lives to play another down. I I'm just amazed not only by his arm strength, but his brain and also his footwork today. All season, I should say. Eight yards to go. A rare drop. C.J. Riley, the redshirt sophomore, caught a pass in the first half. And dropped out. It looked like it hit his helmet. <laughs> Coach Doran's just looking on like, oh, well, okay. Riley has a nice pass, a nice out route, gets completion, gets separation, and just not able to bring that in. I think that's one of those where you want it, you know it's coming to you, you want to make a play, and just a little too eager to try to turn up field. ECU begins at the 12. Rain starting to fall at Carter Finley. NC State still up big. Little rain, just grab a poncho, you're good to go. Loyal fan base in Raleigh. Here for the final regular season game for the Wolfpack. The enthusiasm level for NC State football is off the chart. They continue to set a season tickets, attendance records. Love their football here at NC State. You can see why. Well, Dave Dorn and company are going to their fifth straight bowl. The last head coach to do that was Dick Sheridan back in the 90s. And where was that one going? ECU is trying to generate some sort of a drive. They had a couple fine-looking drives in the first half, but they ended in some miscues. Another time on an interception. 
Wasn't sure if they were trying to throw that for Henley or for Brown, and the other one was supposed to be the, the screen guy, the lead blocker. Both of them kind of set up in a formation that to the block. So it's another second down and long, very long yardage. How? Hassan Howe, the junior from Jacksonville, three-yard game. Third and seven. Pairing his fouls, the 1,000-yard receiver, Trayvon Brown, just three times today. That's it. He's number 88 in the white. So let's look for him this time to see if he can make that explosive play and get this drive stalled, keep it going, rather, I should say. Top of nope. your screen. Nowhere to go. Wow. Tim Kid Glass. Ten-yard loss, a sack. Watch Glass, a little delayed blitz right there. No one from East Carolina is able to pick him up. He's got a free shot for his first sack of the season. There's Herring favoring what looks like his right arm or right hand. Herring's been beat up all season long. Aylers, as we know, not there today. And you get a look again at Tim Kid Glass. 34 comes as a little slow down on the blitz, kind of shows coverage, and then all of a sudden, bam, comes in there. Hearing he goes down on that arm. And there's the freshman, Caden yeah. Norman. He is your backup today with Ehlers out. Now they have Infetti, who has played some early in the season. The kid from Charlotte came out with big promise. But it's not played any in the last three or four ball games. In fact, when asked about him as a quarterback, he said he was no longer in the quarterback's room. And I remember we had a shot early in the ball game of the sideline, and I saw Infetti, who could be one of the backup quarterbacks. But it looks like they're going to go maybe with Norman if Herring's unable to return to this football game. These doesn't would be look the, good. That yep. does not look good. These would be the first snaps of the year for Norman. Yeah. They've used three quarterbacks, as I mentioned. Fetty, who's not played in the last uh, maybe four ball games, and then, of course, Ehlers and Herring. So. Look at Young's heels. When it rains, it pours, doesn't it? NC State is going to start at ECU's 41. So we'll have to wait and see on Herring. He's got a little time, but as you mentioned, Coleman is warming up. So Ryan Finley, you mentioned before, he could be the first name, first quarterback, I should say, taken in the NFL draft next year. He's got his bachelor's degree. He's got the master's degree. It's all football right now. Yeah. He basically is on an NFL yeah. schedule. Yeah. I mean... How much more of a perfect world would you want to have <laughs> if you're Ryan Finley? Sharp kid, very smart. Football all the time. His preparation paramounts. And he's got C.J. Riley for another decent pickup. Matthew McKay, just if you're wondering, is the backup. He's only attempted seven passes. And another one of these local kids from Millbrook, if he gets in the ball game, anticipate maybe seeing him after this drive or definitely early fourth quarter. But Finley's got total control of the game. Strong push up front. And Chance Purvis. He pushes Gillespie back, a loss of two. Yeah, but he needed help. Unlike he just did it by himself. We've already established the fact first hit guy is not going to bring it down. We have not talked very much about Nate Harvey. He just beat me to it. Yep. I mean, he just and, a, and that just shows what a good job the offensive line has done for North Carolina State. This is Myers one more time. And 
Jacoby Myers with his 10th catch today. Well, I told you he's going to go over double figures. I figured that, right? I told you that. So I'm two for two on predictions, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to give you more credit. You've nailed no, no, it a no, few no, times no, today. No. I'll take the two. <laughs> Very modest. Work my way up to, you know, maybe three, four, or five before this game is over. But again, just another little route. You run about a seven yard route, boom, turn, kick, first down. Myers is pushing up against his career high in yards as well. Finley with great time again. Catch number 11 for 11. I was totally zoned in on Myers. He ran like a little angle route to the post and then just stopped. And the ball was perfectly thrown. What did we say earlier about Finley? He throws a nice catchable ball. He throws his receivers open. All you got to do is catch it. Myers does that for his 11th reception of the afternoon. He's three shy of his career high and catches as well. And they needed every one of those in that first game of the season against James Madison. 14. Against the Mike Houston coached Dukes. Reggie Gillespie. He always winds up falling forward. Senior from High Point, North Carolina. So he's over 100 now, right? I'll take that one too. I'll take that one too. <laughs> Keeping the numbers here. I like that. Now I think you're peeking at those no, numbers. No, I didn't. I couldn't. I can't see that well. <laughs> Reggie Gillespie, he may hit 1,000 yards today, maybe. He could do it in NC State's bowl game, that's for sure. Where the Wolfpack will be, we'll find out soon enough. A few possibilities for Dave Dorn and company last year. Nice win over what was Arizona State? Yep, out yeah. in El Paso in the Sun Bowl. You know, one of the things that Dave Dorn talked about this week and was emphasizing to his team was, was no let up. You know, let's continue to try. We're striving. We're playing for something. Win number nine and possibly win number ten. And then the last thing was quite, was was some of the fans were talking about the last howl. And you've heard that echo throughout the stadium today on the PA, the howl of the wolf. This is the last time to be on this field. And these guys have come out very focused and wanted to wanted to be in attack mode. And East Carolina you know, has been walking the plank, so to speak, since the moment this ball game started. A timeout taken by Dave Doran, the sixth year head coach. The last time fans are watching Ryan Finley, more than 10,000 yards in his three years. Ann Raleigh started at Boise State, transfers to NC State. And you know, I remember when he came in, I think their first game he was against William and Mary a couple of seasons ago. And they had another quarterback, McClendon, who since transferred. And these two guys were like nip and tuck as to who was going to be the, the starting quarterback. Finley won the job, and they announced it really like two days before the first game. And he's not looked back in an NC State uniform. He beat him out two years ago. Quite simply outworked him. Finley, very unique. He's very mature. And his preparation, it speaks for itself. Incomplete over the middle on fourth down. Pardon me, that was on third. Now the fourth down coming up. He tried to influence White, try to get everybody to try to sneak off of this underneath. Ball just a little wide, and um, this may be the last drive possibly that they're thinking about. It looks like Dave Dorn and the crew are going to go for this. It's a fourth down and I think about two. So they can get a first down without getting the touchdown. Ball being on the three-yard line. So we'll see. Myers five yards shy of his career high. Finley looking that way. Steps up. Thomas, touchdown. When he has it, 
thread the needle and throw it in a tight window. He steps back, rares there between three white shirted pirate players. Wolfpack scores a touchdown. A lot of peas there. <laughs> Thirty-four nothing. A three touchdown day for Ryan Finley. How did he fit this one through the window? Big lead, pack on top. If it was Ryan Finley's last pass at Carter Finley Stadium, a nice way to finish his career in Raleigh. The touchdown pass to Thayer Thomas, three sixty-five and three scores. For the Phoenix native. Wow. I mean, <laughs> yes, he, he, he's been in a groove. Yes. Yeah, he's got great protection, great receivers. And if you're going to leave the stage, this is not a better way to do it. I don't think I've ever seen yeah. a quarterback that commands attention but still hates that attention at the same time Ryan Finley gets his work done behind the scenes doesn't need the attention the spotlight doesn't have an ego that's why NFL teams uh, they're salivating at the mouth the thought of he running their offenses in the future and that's a rare trade in this world of social media we got to tell you everything we do and you got to tell me everything I do the fact guy that goes out and works leads by example, and is a true teammate. Yes, that, that's the guy you can build a franchise around. So from one quarterback to the other, number two in the white, you just saw a moment ago, that's Kingsley Fetty. if yeah. Fetty yeah. is into the game for Reed Herring. Whatever the reasons were, like I said, a lot of, lot of crazy things going on in the season. Good to see him out there. It was a highly recruited high school athlete out of the Charlotte area. You know, another one of those guys had some gaudy numbers, threw for over 10,000 yards and 100 touchdowns in his day, and uh, had some had some reps in the um, early season games, but hasn't been on the radar lately. So to get him back out there is a good thing. I think if nothing else, you know, it gives a better taste in his mouth as he leaves. Yep, he played the season. In, yep, played in four games, and now the first time in quite a while. To your point, on the ball carrier, Trace Christian. Just got stamped. Third eight, we've seen this quite a bit. ECU has faced long yardage on third down. And, and one of the things that we really didn't get a chance to talk about because everything happened so fast for East Carolina is their ability to do things on first down. You want to make those second and third down plays easy to manage. They've been behind the chains this entire football game on their third down situations. Again, what are we, third down and eight? Just three first downs for ECU. And another interception, Jarius Moorhead. It's the second pick by this NC State defense. The pressure. Fitty just kind of throws this ball in his back foot, just launches it. And, and you would have thought that was intended for Moorhead. It's perfectly a thrown ball that was for him. His third interception of the season had a touchdown against Marshall, a team that's playing this afternoon against Vitek for 57 and a touchdown, and that was probably the easier of the three interceptions he had this year. And once again, Finley gets ready to go back on the field one more time. Well, here what about is. a quarterback keeper to end the whole thing for him? How about that? What do you think? We've touted your... I'm just saying, what, I said, what about? I said, today, what about? So. I, I didn't say this is a, this is a what about. Gillespie churns better than many in this conference. Uh, about two. Or another Gillespie run, which would uh, tie the all time rushing record. I think that's where he's going to go. How's Reggie Gillespie going to be remembered as a Wolfpack? I, I think those five touchdowns in the game winner against North Carolina is going to be something that they're going to talk a lot about. And he's got another today. Yeah. Into the end zone for a second time. Stands on today. 
Well, you had to be a rocket scientist to figure out a three or four yard run. Great block at the point of attack. You lead with a tight end. You've got tackles outside doing what they do. And then you've got the big man, Gillespie, inside. Sculpture goes in there, makes a block, and loving his teammates. And there he is. He has established the all time rushing record for a season at NC State. T.A. McClendon held it for quite a while. Reggie Gillespie. Ted Brown and T.A. McClendon and Stan Fritz. I mean, my goodness, there have been some great running backs in the history of NC State. And add this name to the record book. My man, Mr. Gillespie, Junior. Reggie Gillespie in his final game at Carter Finley Stadium has just broken the single season touchdown record at NC State. Congratulations. And he has earned every yard, Stan, today. And see, and Ted Brown was from the High Point area when he played at NC State. Willie Burden was another outstanding running back I remember growing up at NC State. So, so you know, yeah. Maybe there's Ted C. Ted Brown, Dick Christie. Name ready to go. Dick Christie, NC State legend. I mean, there's a lot of history. Roman Gabriel wasn't, wasn't running back, but played here. I mean, my goodness. And then Dick Sheridan, Lou Holtz was a coach here. You know, the late great Everett Case got all this football stuff started at NC State. I think number 15, Ryan Finley, perhaps may find his name up there soon. All right, so we saw Kingsley and Fetty, the last series for ECU. This is Caden Norman, the true freshman. And not a lot of running room at all. Clayton only about maybe 20 minutes from camp was time to, uh, to his hometown, the Clayton Comets. They got really good football down there, but because of the red shirt rule, he hasn't played, he can go in there and it won't, won't affect his red shirt possibilities. But a lot of good history, football at NC State. East Carolina, you know, you think about Steve Logan, the, long, the winningest coach here, and that's when the Pirates were rolling back in the day. Ed Emery coached here. You know, the three, they need the what? Let me tell you about this player. I got to tell you some ECU football history. Stay tuned. Oh, I got to tell you, they had a season, I can't remember, 80, 81, 82, somebody that's, you know, Power Fan in the 80s, they lost to Florida State, Miami, in Florida, all by less than a touchdown. Now, the whole group was like 15 points. And back in those days, an 8 3 team had no shot of going to a bowl game. I mean, Ed Emery, Clarence Stasevich, the legendary coach, that got all this started here. Oh, Pat right. Dye. Remember the 92 Peach Bowl. Uh, I'm going to tell you about the Peach Bowl in a minute now. <laughs> I'm glad you asked about the Peach Bowl. Caden Norman, the redshirt freshman from Clayton, North Carolina. Boy, this NC State defense suffocating today. If you were to ask most East Carolina fans, and probably NC State fans too, the, the most memorable game of this series is probably that 91, actually New Year's Day 92 game at the Beach Bowl, where, uh, you know, Jeff Blake connected with Luke Fisher about a minute to go, touchdown. But there have been a lot of memorable games in the East Carolina. NC State, you know, they got the gold pants on. I remember when uh, they played them in, Rock, in, Char in Charlotte one year. It was John Thompson, not basketball John Thompson, but the other John Thompson. And it was the last game. I think State rolled them like 50 to 50 to 7 or something like that, 50 to 29 back in 96. So they've had some great football games in this NC State East Carolina rivalry. There's my man Pratt. Jermaine Pratt, the linebacker. Put your best guys on, on special teams as well. No. There's clearly the disparity in total yards, and ECU wow. is – you're mentioning some old coaches. They are going to have a new coach. Scotty Montgomery was relieved of his duties on Thursday. And, Stan, yes, a third straight, perhaps three and nine season they for know, ECU. Perhaps in it. They're down 41 points with 223. <laughs> right. It's going to be three and nine. <laughs> Unless you know something I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> this team just a few years removed from a 10-win campaign. Back in 2013 when Ruffin McNeil, who, by the way, is yeah. perhaps about to win a Big 12 title with Oklahoma, was the head coach. Competing in the AAC. They had went back-to-back 
Conference USA Championships. Administratively, they didn't feel like they were moving the right way, had one losing season with the uh, rough final year, and they made a change. That, that stunned Pirate Nation. It stunned the college football world. I'm going to be very honest with you. It stunned anybody. There's another big catch right here, but it stunned everyone, and it didn't sit right, and there's been a cloud over this program since then. you got a new athletic director you've got to hire. This is a – and, I, and I, I'm not making excuses. This is a very passionate program. They love their ECU football, but they didn't – hey, they didn't win. They, uh, five – they lost 11 football games or played 11 football games at a point score, 50 points or more, mm. okay? Too you know, many. They, they had seven losses, uh, five, five losses, seven points or more. They lost a two. And no disrespect when I say this. They've had great recruiting classes the last two years. There's a nice catch by Riley. But they lost two games that have been the death nail, I think, for ECU football. The loss to James Madison. James Madison beat them down. And then this year, they lost to North Carolina A&T because this was the year of promise. They were going to go to a bowl game. They lost the A&T game, came back the next week and beat Carolina. And they said, okay, we're rolling. And they haven't been able to roll. Flags everywhere. Reggie Gillespie rolling into the end zone. There are two flags at the line of scrimmage. Holding offense number 67. 10-yard penalty. Justin Witt, who set out the first half of this ball game due to the little brouhaha at the end of the ball game against Heels, and you can see clearly, oh yeah, that's, there's no doubt about that. Takedown. And, and Gillespie, see Gillespie kind of looked back, he's, you know, kind of heard the groan of the flag, so okay, who did it, who did it? <laughs> well, Jacoby Myers, Stan, has just tied his career high, 161 yards. And he's two catches shy of his career high in that category as well. He's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. <laughs> We're talking a lot about Ryan Finley at the next level, but Kelvin Harmon and Jacoby Myers. And here's Amezi. How do you size up those two? Myers is 6'2", 205 pounds. He's got speed, can make plays, and can deep, deep threat. Harmon goes 6'3", about 215 pounds. They've got size. They run. What I like about them, they run very solid routes. And if you throw the ball to them nine times out of ten, they're going to make the catch. I think, I think there are a lot of teams that would like to have them to play on Sundays. Well, they've got 18 catches. A mezzi, another reception. But it's short of the first down. You know, Harmon Myers both had a lot of catches over 100 yards. We'll talk more about this in the back line. All Wolfpack looking for their ninth win. Bowl game coming up. Trying to finish off the regular season. Next. See, we, this way the year's been for East Carolina fans. When he came here, there were 45,000 people sitting beside him. Now he's up here all by himself. It's been that kind of season. It's been that kind of day. He might be picking out his seat for next year. Remember, <laughs> NC State opens against ECU yes. in 2019, yes, right indeed. here on, on August 31st. Ryan Finley still in at quarterback. Reggie Gillespie. There he goes again. He's still in, too. Well, he may be the running back of the week again in the ACC. 22 yards. At 118 going in there, give him a few more. Season high for him was, was 129 last week against the Eels. So his back-to-back -back football games against two rival teams will give him a lot of bragging rights in the state of North Carolina the remainder of his life. Career high, 134. Yeah, 34, today. that's it. That sets him up for a 1,000-yard for a season, perhaps, in the bowl game. Yeah, he catches passes, too. And if it was fumbled, it's out of bounds. So NC State still keeps it. 
And they've used him primarily as a runner, only his seventh reception of the season. But, again, showing some versatility. It's the senior's last football game, so you want to get him out there and let him have some fun. You see him shaking his hand, fingers right there. That, that, that may have been the one. <laughs> you know, say, so, okay, we're not going to risk anything else. We won't play for another couple of weeks. Reggie has battled through ankle and foot issues throughout his career. He sat behind two 1,000-yard rushers the last two seasons. Dave Doran said it is so rewarding seeing what Reggie has done this year as a senior. And Myers almost had another catch. Well, it, Third and eight. It just shows you what hard work and perseverance will do for you. A guy that, that, that played sparingly his you know, first couple of seasons here at NC State. And this year's having a breakout season, a record setting season. And Reggie, a father, too. Yeah. Best of luck to Reggie. Coaching staff has been a great source of guidance for him throughout that as well. Four wideouts on a third down. Myers a catch, short of the first. NC State fans not happy about that hit by Gore. Thought that might have been a little too high, possibly some helmet to helmet. Nevertheless, Myers with yet another catch. Was that his 13th, 14th catch, that of, that of Myers? Field goal good. 13 straight field goals converted by Chris Dunn. He's a freshman. <laughs> NC State trying to notch its first shutout win in more than three years. 12.47 to go in the fourth. With Stan Luter, Kevin Fitzgerald, with you. NC State. Well, now 12 minutes, 47 seconds away. Of winning its ninth game, this would be the first time in more than 25 years of back-to-back nine-win seasons in Raleigh. NC State did fall to Clemson earlier this year. And down the road in Charlotte. The Tigers hosting the Panthers. Clemson and Pitt, 8 Eastern tonight on ABC for the ACC title. This would be the fourth straight ACC championship for Clemson. And Tigers favored by you know, almost four, four touchdowns. Freshman quarterback out there for his second series for the Pirates, Caden Norman. A handoff on first down. All right, this is option three or four, if you will, at quarterback. So whoever the new head coach is next season in Greenville, he will still have Reed Herring or Holton Ehlers. And Hopefully. Well, whether that, Hopefully. Right. Whether or not that's David Blackwell, the first-year defensive coordinator today, the interim head coach, and there are many that feel he is a head coach very soon in his career. Well, that is how respected he is. Whoever gets this job. Ball is out. It can be picked up. Oh, down to the one. Right now ruled to be NC State football. Brock Miller, who was sensational last week against North Carolina, picked up the rolling pig. Get your hands in there. It's a nice job there by Parham. Stripped the ball away from Howe, and then watch Miller just get there, and he's yeah, He's short of the goal line by about a yard. And what I was about to say, and I can get this in before they score again, is whoever takes this job 
he's got the work cut out for him. Because not only do you have to, to get players, and you've got to rebuild the community, you've got to rebuild the school as far as the, the pride of this program, and you don't have an athletic director. So there's a lot of bonding. There's this, this got to happen at East Point. you got a job ahead of you. And so the person that takes this job has got to be somebody that, that, can, that can build and can, and can put, be a glooper, a person that can put them together again because the pieces have come totally apart at the East Carolina that most of the people that came to this game once knew. That's just, that's just keeping it real, as the guys say. Okay? That's what they say down there on Cotan Street. Okay? On Ninth Street in Greenville. Keeping it real yep. over in Winterville and all them town blocks out there. Whoever gets this job, you got your job head hand him. It's a good job. It's a great job. The short of the goal line of the NC State's ball first and goal at the one. They're building a new facility. A lot of press box is going to be open next year. Awesome. It's a great school, you know, nearly 30,000 students to med school. Greenville's a great place. It's, it's a great program. They've won. I told you all those names, you know, you know, and Emory and Bill Lewis and Skip Holtz. They've won at East Carolina. They got to get find a way to get it back. How about the big fella plunging in? <laughs> Garrett Bradbury, the center, 24 starts, Outland Trophy nominee, All Conference performer, grad student, outstanding in the classroom. You just got you a touchdown. <laughs> Everything you just named, I think that's personally at the top of his list. He put that touchdown there. No question about <laughs> it. He's got the ball, and he's gave it away. He took the ball. He put it in his stands. <laughs> that's just your average one play, one yard touchdown drive with the touchdown score by your center. And a 50 spot for NC State. 1973, NC State, it was like the fourth game in the series, NC State beat East Carolina 57-8. East Carolina was trying to build a program like that. Then a couple of years later, in 2014, 52-14, the center's going in to score, or red in the end zone, 51-0. Pack with the Pirates. Offensive lineman scoring, alert. Garrett Bradbury into the end zone for NC State. And, and how about Tyrone Prescott? See, he should have kicked the that, extra that's, point. That's what's more impressive. Bradbury's 6'3", <laughs> 300. All he had to do was fall in the end zone from a half a yard line. They're going to kick it from the 20. But it's this kick by Prescott. Look at how done. You may be some kicking competition coming up soon. <laughs> Trenton Gill boots it away. Wow. Love for the offensive lineman. Has East Carolina crossed a 50 in the second half? I know they haven't crossed a 50, but maybe one time. They've maybe only two. Run there you plays. go. Brad yeah. from Charlotte. First career touchdown. Yeah. yeah you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, to your point, he's a captain. He's up for various awards. Almost 40 starts in his career. That's tough to do. Powerhouse Charlotte Christian. High school he attended, and off we go. ECU, yes, has only run a few plays in NC State territory. So back to your point on the Pirates. It, this is, of course, a forgettable way to end the season, but you've coached at both of these institutions. So Been there, how, yeah. how do you do that? How did, how did Ruffin McNeil have it going a few years ago? We got what rid of first thing about Ruffin. Ruffin was uh, an alum. Ruffin played in East Carolina. was part of some of the bowl turnaround. He didn't have a magic wand, but there was one of the ingredients. He played purple and gold, as a lot of people did. Oh. Now, it's just a matter of getting players, and, and it, it's a tough recruiting business. Now. you got to get guys, and you got to get guys to buy into what you're doing. Not to say that they did buy into what Scotty did. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying it's a very, very difficult job, and somebody's got to come in there, and you got to start 
you know, it, it won't get any lower than 51 now. Okay, but Ruff came in, he had a plan, and, and, it, and it went for a while, but then they were, I guess, afraid of what was going on as far as competing in Conference USA. Skip Holtz, or Bill Lewis, they were very dynamic. And, of course, Steve Logan. Steve Logan would have, would have, man. <laughs> now, I love me some Coach Logan. And he, he, he had a high-powered offense. Defense was aggressive, special teams. And, and, and they were building something those days, too. You didn't want to play, you know, it was only until 1999, you talk about the Cincinnati State history, that East Carolina played NC State in Greenville. All right, they never played. You didn't want to play East Carolina. The worst thing you wanted to do, East Carolina was like an up and coming. You know how Florida State was back in the day, and nobody wanted to play them, and, and, and kind of like Central Florida was becoming now, and they weren't your homecoming team. They weren't getting 51 thrown up on them. Yep. And, and you got to get a guy in and get a, and a vision. And, and, and the Chancellor State and all those people have got that vision. And so it starts tomorrow. I would start say it starts today, but, you know. Sleep no. on it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm not trying to be ugly, but, I mean, if you ask a question, I'm going to give you an honest answer. There have been better days in Greenville, and there will be. 51 for the pack. Time for our Carhartt putting in the work player of the game. Who else? It's Ryan Finley. How about this pass to Kelvin Harmon? Finley in his final game at Carter Finley Stadium has passed for over 400 yards, three touchdowns. He was picking apart this ECU defense today. All afternoon long. Really was knocked down maybe one time the entire afternoon. The second 409-yard game. He had a 473 against Syracuse. And a tough loss up there at the Dome back in the day. But, uh, wow, he's a very, very impressive young man. Did you say impressive? Reggie Gillespie. Reggie Gillespie now over 200 yards. Going out with the bang. Reggie Gillespie playing some of his best football the last two games of the season. 86-yard run. Everybody got their block. Hat on a hat. And let the big guy roll. Rumbling, not stumbling, but rumbling, young man rumbling. 86 yards away. His longest carry of the year was 34. Now it's 86. Wow. Reggie high. Gillespie is now over 1,000 yards. Would not what have a thought day. that coming into the day just because of the work volume. But a 1,000-yard rusher, two 1,000-yard receivers. Your senior game, your last game on this field where you've worked for five years. You want to go out with a bang. You want to make something special, overcome with emotion. Look at the emotions. Maybe tired, too. It was a long run. <laughs> but my goodness, what a special effort we've seen today by not only Reggie Gillespie, but Ryan Finley, those outstanding wide receivers, but the entire NC State football team. They came out on a mission and certainly they have not failed. There's the embrace from his head coach. That's beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Can you imagine from now on, every time you come back to Carter Finley Stadium, he'll be back. That you remember the last time you carried the football it was an 86-yard run. By the way, this is Woody Cornwell. Woody Cornwell! <laughs> Keep that football. Another, another grass here from Lake June, Alaska, North Carolina. 
and he just made his senior memory. Man. I, did, I didn't see this coming. I, I did not, I, I'll be very honest with you, and I, I've seen a lot of blowout football games, I've seen a lot of games in this similar situation, and I just did not think that ECU would have a 58 spot put on him after a 60 plus spot a week ago. ECU has allowed 114 points over its last two games. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Stan Reggie Gillespie becomes the third straight 1,000 yard rusher in Raleigh. Reggie, Jalen Samuels, Matt Days. And he played behind those guys. He played behind those guys. So. 58 to nothing. I guess doing this. This tenure, even though Coach Montgomery is no longer there, this is the 12th time they've allowed 50 points or more. And, and let me say this too, while, while I'm talking about it, the, the kids, the kids loved Scott. Right. I mean, he had their respect, and they just, they just didn't get it done. I mean, you know, let's let's be fair as fair. I mean, sometimes you don't do it. And the name of the game at this level is is to win football games, and you win uh, what nine, nine and 26. In a conference like the AAC, and you see programs that are being built in Central Florida and South Florida. Cincinnati only won one or two games last year, and they've turned it around to a 10 win season. Yep. I mean, you know. And, and, and things will get better for East Carolina. I, 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 you know, knowing the people that I know, but today is not going to be that day. And all, all the excitement and all the talk goes to the NC State. They've gone out and done everything you want a team to do. Focus on senior day. And it's hard to play on senior day, as we both know. We've done it. We've done it. Good luck to the team that matches up with NC State in its bowl game this year. It you will be the fifth straight bowl game you for the Wolfpack. You better bring your lunch, because you're going to be in the film room a long time trying to figure this out. <laughs> you better not have any holiday plans. The football. Gillespie, Myers, Harmon, Finley. How about Garrett Bradbury rushing the football? <laughs> the center. Yeah. And incompletion on third and 15. And then don't forget how Pratt on one side, Murchison on another side, Morehead, Ingram, Bryant, Roseboro. I didn't talk much about Roseboro this afternoon. Isaiah Moore. My goodness. And then how about the play? I mean, it's. There have been so many plays that get you off your seat, but that Nick McLeod defending, deflecting, and then intercepting was an outstanding play, I thought. And, I mean, that, you know, you had a chance to maybe get on the board, at least get three, and I could not get that done. Look, the expectations were high for NC State, that's for sure, and there was a reason behind it. Now, 41-7 to against Clemson, and that's going to leave – a sour taste to many Wolfpack fans' mouths, but nine and three or nine wins in consecutive years is something to be proud of, and it's something that hasn't happened in more than 25 years. Oh, no question about it. And, and you look at that situation where they were on a roll and lost. The, the game that the game that really haunts them, I think, is the Wake Forest loss, and they've had troubles with Wake Forest over the last eight, nine, ten years. Wake Forest became bowl eligible last week with a convincing win over Duke. I believe it is. It's 11, right? ACC teams that will be Everybody participating but the in bowls. And Louisville. Yep. About two hours and change from Raleigh in Charlotte tonight. The Dr. Pepper ACC Championship. Dabo Swinney and the Tigers go for their fourth straight ACC title. And then you also have the American Championship game, Memphis and Central Florida. Josh Heupel's team undefeated again. 
that win streak continues. NC State rolling ECU. Matthew McKay, he's into the game, and his handoff to DeMonte Rim. Some zigs and zags for the redshirt junior. Yeah, McKay's a uh, sophomore from uh, another another one of the uh, local schools, Millbrook High School, and Millbrook Wildcats. Uh, let me see. You said Cle you were kicking Clemson. You have to take Cle the word Clemson and yeah. Pitt, huh? Yeah, Clemson to Pitt. Coming up later today. I'm sorry, Wakefield. I'm looking around. He went to Wakefield. Oh, yeah, I knew what I was going to about Wakefield before he was at Clemson. You know whose dad used to coach at Wakefield? Philip Rivers. When Rivers came here as a freshman, his dad took the Wakefield High School coaching job. Dexter Cooley, longtime buddy of mine, was the AD. And so that was it. So, you know, boom. I just, it's the stuff I know that I got to get out because it's the last football game, and I'm not going to have a chance to tell anybody, you know, unless I go, like, through a drive through or something and somebody just throws some numbers on us. I'm telling you little, little things. You yeah, had five Phil minutes Rivers. and 40 seconds. Yeah, so Phil Rivers' dad used to coach at Wakefield, and that's where uh, Matthew McKay was quarterback. For. What are the similarities between Phil Rivers and Ryan Finley? Brains, accuracy, toughness. I, you know, I, 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 I can't remember – necessarily the, the arm strength from then to, you know, he's looking at him as a state player. But uh, leadership characteristics, he's got them. They knocked off Notre Dame a couple of times. But, you know, let let him be him. And um, Finley's going to have his name somewhere. He'll have to his name on the top of the stadium as well. It's been a wonderful career. It's been a pleasure watching him. And I know NC State fans are looking forward to his little brother coming in very soon. You were talking about that earlier today. Ben, who is a class of 2020 commit, he commit just a few weeks ago, and if there was only one other quarterback sometime between Rivers and Finley who achieved, oh yeah, Russell Wilson was here as well Dang, for a few years. Yeah, 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 yeah. A nice string and of Mike quarterbacks. Glennon, and Glennon, yeah. and there was there was a time right. where they, and it, there were four NC State Alums, four NC State athletes that were quarterbacks in the NFL at the same time. Saw, saw Russell Wilson um, last week, in fact, for a quick second at the, um, at the Seahawks Panthers game. One of the league high six, Ryan Finley was named the All ACC first team. It's never happened for him before. Yeah. Parted two wide receivers to wind up on the all-ACC first team. So that's, right. that's the amazing thing to me, yeah. is that. Torrey Holt, uh, he was a star here, but Harmon and Myers together tallying over 2,000 yards. They each have eclipsed that 1,000-yard mark. And the funny thing about it is coming into this afternoon's ball game, They'd run 827 plays. They had run 408 of them. They'd thrown 418 passes. So you talk about balance, and that's with two receivers that have caught for over 1,000 yards, and they were running back that's rushed for over 1,000 yards. I mean, that's how explosive this offense and how power as far as many plays they've run. Finley almost hit 4,000 yards, and he's probably going to do that in the bowl game. Oh, how about Rem? Hurdling for a couple extra. You could do that back in the day, right? Can still do it. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this. Whoop. Hurdling, hurdling defenders a single bound. All NC State today. Okay, hands it back off. ECU has not been shut out in a game in 21 years. That is 265 straight games when Paul Pasqualoni and Donovan McNabb beat them 56 0. That's a long time. And it, it, it touches on a couple points. A, the success of this ECU program, which we've highlighted, and just how far. At least in the short term this year, it has sunk a bit. 
And there will be a new head coach next year yeah. at ECU. And sometimes you've got to hit the bottom before you can get back to the top. You've got to hit rock bottom, and, and this may be the exclamation point to, to a bad another three and nine season. Fumble here. Yeah, Dabs put it on the ground. Well, hey, they got a minute and 51 seconds. And maybe that 265 game streak might not be snapped. Before I forget it, Tom McClellan, Annabelle Myers, the sports information directors at the respective schools, just want to thank them for all their help and along with the coaches. It's been a crazy week down at East Carolina. We've talked about it nauseam. And Tom stepped up and made sure that we had information, had accurate information, and, and we appreciate that. And Annabelle, you know, uh, one of the best out here. Did a, and a big run for Anthony Scott. Hold on a second. I don't think that streak will be snapped today. Anthony Scott trying to have a memorable last couple of moments on the college football field. A big time run here. Breaks to the outside. Something we haven't been able to see much of this season. But a 53 yard run by Scott. ECU had 55 yards of total offense before that. And only what, four or five first downs all game long? McNeil. There's Jake Verity, the junior kicker. First team all conference. He's a solid kicker. I mean, he's, you know, we, we've seen some really good kickers today, primarily from NC State, but Verity's a strong guy, 18 to 20. And his long was a 50 yarder early in the year, a midseason against Memphis. So you know, give him a chance to get on the board. Fumbled snap, ECU falls on it. So that brings up fourth down. The go. ball is now at the 29, so pushed back a couple yards. Verity, like you said, is hit from 52 this year. Yeah, and, and, and also you look at that graphic, four out of the last five games they won. They finally get a chance to beat East Carolina. They lost the last three. One of those games was a, was a, a, a bone-crushing loss in the final seconds. Down in Greenwood. So here's Verity, 46 yards away. percent of the time he's made this year fourth best in the country the emotion of senior day Wow. Playing your last time at this stadium in front of friends and family. Friends you've now become. Some will be your lifetime friends. But here we go. Here's the drama. Can he make this field go for 46 yards out? And a timeout taken by NC State. So three seconds, we're going to do this again. This is kind of what I anticipated, this game going down to a last second field goal. He had one more in, in him for you folks. Well, we mentioned it before, ECU hasn't been shut out in a game since 1997. And I think we'd all like to see that 
streak continue. So Verity, yeah, who was 18 of 20. Yeah, I think NC State's blocked two kicks already this season. So good gamesmanship here at the end. There's David Blackwell, and that's a sharp stare from the sideline to the other. From 46 for Jake Verity. The shutout avoided. NC State, 58 points on the final home game of the year at Carter Finley Stadium. Good for Verity. Good for him. Back-to-back -back nine win seasons for NC State for the first time in 26 years. Thanks for joining us today at Carter Finley Stadium. For Stan Luter, our entire great crew, Kevin Fitzgerald, saying have a good rest of your, your Saturday. Good night from Raleigh.